Today we're at Spring Grove Cemetery just in front of the historic and remarkable gravesite of Francis Fanny Wright. In the summer of 1828, Frances Fanny Wright made history at the Cincinnati Courthouse. She began a lecture tour speaking out against organized religion, against marriage, which she believed was injurious to women, and against slavery. Her first lecture was mind-blowing. From Cincinnati, Frances Fanny Wright continued her lecture tour across the United States speaking to audiences of both men and women, and this was scandalous. By the end of it, she became known as the Red Harlot of Infidelity. Fanny Wright lived a remarkable life, and she was decades, generations even, ahead of her time. She was born in Scotland, and she developed an enduring passion for America. And she thought of herself as sort of the next generation to carry on the revolutionary ideas of the founding fathers. She first came to the United States in 1818. She publishes a book about her impressions of America. We're right after the War of 1812, when Great Britain is trying to say, oh, America, what a disaster this democratic experiment is. And here along comes Fanny Wright saying, no, no, America is the land of milk and honey. This is fantastic. So of course, American readers loved it. And she used this book to introduce herself to the Marquis de Lafayette, the French military hero of both the American Revolution and the French. So fast forward to 1824, the Marquis de Lafayette is returning to the U.S. on sort of a farewell tour. Well, who invites slash inserts herself as part of his entourage? Fanny Wright. She's traveling America with the hero of the American Revolution. Because she's with the Marquis de Lafayette, she hobnobs with presidents, spends several days at Monticello, hanging out with Thomas Jefferson, and she uses this entree as a place to float her controversial scheme to end enslavement. She thinks communal labor will turn out to be much more profitable, much more efficient than slavery, and that all she needs to do is demonstrate this. So she purchases several hundred acres of land near Memphis, Tennessee, and she calls this community Neshoba. She uses her inheritance to buy 15 humans who she also enslaves with the promise that they can buy their own freedom. But almost from the start, her plan does not work. Within a few years, her Neshoba community has um, collapsed and she uses a lot of her inheritance to take the people that she had held in bondage and travel with them to Haiti and freed them there because she saw that as a democracy led by formerly enslaved people and people of color. In 1844, she returns to Cincinnati, the city that made her who she hoped she could be with that first lecture tour back in 1828. And she lives her final years here, and then she is buried here in Spring Grove Cemetery with the most remarkable gravestone I have ever seen for a woman in the 19th century. So I wanna call our attention to two quotes I have wedded the cause of human improvement, staked on it my fortune, my reputation, and my life. And what I love about that is how she uses wedded as a verb. She's not wedding a man, she's wedded her life to the cause of human improvement, which to her was about free thought, rationalist inquiry, democracy, women's rights, the abolition of slavery, and also education, which brings me to the second quote. Humankind is but one family. The education of its youth should be equal and universal. So she was a really early vocal proponent of what we now call public schools. One way reformers thought to ensure the safety, sanctity, longevity of our democracy was through public education. On the rear, she lists all of her favorite books that she wrote. Altorf, which was the play she wrote, was performed across the United States, A Few Days in Athens, and then Views on Society and Manners in America. That's the book she published after her first trip to the United States. Lectures on knowledge and morals, poems, 
and fables and political works. And what I love about this, again, is how rare and really even unique, I think, it is for a woman, a woman who died in 1852, when wives are still considered more or less the property of their husbands, when it's still controversial for women to be speaking in public, that Fanny Wright stakes her claim for eternity. And she does so here in Spring Grove Cemetery, one of the most historic and beautiful cemeteries when suffragists Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Matilda Jocelyn Gage, and Susan B. Anthony got together in the 1880s to publish the history of women's suffrage, who is the very first picture in this historic documentation of the movement? It's Fanny Wright. This woman has paved the way for us, controversial as she was. So here lies Frances Fanny Wright, the red harlot of infidelity, the woman so brave and so bold to speak in front of mixed audiences, beginning here in Cincinnati in 1828.